The 2024 NFL Draft is full of talented quarterback prospects. Today we are going to be diving into 10 of my favorite right now. We are going to be having our list of the top 10 quarterbacks in the draft as of right now. Still very much subject to change, but let's dive into number 10 here, starting with Quinn Ewers. I also have my scouting system basically displayed on the screen as well. This goes through basically all the percentages that they have for each trait and how many points that they get out of that trait. For example, Quinn Ewers has 62% of the possible points for his accuracy because I don't think his accuracy is particularly. There are still a lot of issues that I think he needs to clean up. First and foremost, the accuracy, especially deep down the field, is really troublesome. He's just not very consistent at hitting those deep shots downfield. I also think that his kind of awkward throwing motion does make it a little bit longer sometimes. He can have a little bit of an elongated release time, which just gets the ball there a little bit of a half second lower. He's really not in a super complicated offense, doesn't ask him to do too much, and he has great wide receivers that really help kind of boost his stats on a lot of yak receptions as well. I do think that the physical talent is there. He can step up in the pocket and make a play. He is tough. He will stand in the pocket and take a massive hit, which I absolutely respect and love to see from a quarterback. But I just think that there is so much refinement that needs to happen with Quinn Ewers right now. A lot of people were talking about him as potential quarterback three in this class, just not there at all on Quinn Ewers right now. I think he's more of a day three developmental type quarterback right now. That's why I have a late third, early fourth round grade on Ewers. Wouldn't be at all surprised if he does decide to return to school. At number nine, we have Riley Leonard, the quarterback out of Duke. He's six foot four, 212 pounds, definitely shows some size when he runs the ball, which is really kind of where he stands out. He's not necessarily the best athlete with the best speed or really the most elusiveness, but I do think ability is there. A lot of the traits that you look for, I think he's pretty decent off script when things break down. He can operate an offense relatively effectively. He just doesn't go through a ton of progressions within his system. He's not asked to do that. I, I do think his decision-making can be a little sporadic erratic as well and his anticipation you know they don't really ask him to anticipate routes it's mostly one read throw it to him if not run and I think that that is going to be a tough transition in the NFL I do also have a late third early fourth round grade on Riley Leonard like the traits both him and Ewers I like the traits for him but I think that they need a ton of refinement to really become a franchise level quarterback in the NFL at number eight, we have Carson Beck, a first-time starter for Georgia. He is a six-foot-four, two hundred twenty-six-pound quarterback. He has that nice build. I really think he's got really impressive arm talent. The ball kind of flies off his arm with good velocity. He can throw it deep down the field. You really don't have any questions about if he has an NFL-caliber arm. He also has some decent accuracy, some decent decision making. I think his mobility is all right as well. I just don't think there's anything that really stands out in those kind of categories right now it's mostly just the arm talent within a really good system you think of Brock Bowers and some of the playmakers they have there I think Beck operates the offense really effectively he's somebody like Stetson Bennett who was the quarterback in the offense for a long time he just operates the offense as it needs to be run he gets the ball in the hands of his wide receivers and lets them make plays I think he's more physically talented than somebody like Stetson Bennett and I definitely think he could be an NFL quarterback as he continues to really grow he's somebody that I do think is going to be higher ranked on NFL boards than a lot of media people's boards. I think there's just a lot of potential there for him to develop into a nice quarterback. I think his rhythm and timing is improving throughout the season as well. I do think he could benefit from staying a year at Georgia, really kind of developing a lot of those skills and potentially be a top 50 pick next year if things continue to really grow for him. But I do like what I've seen from Beck so far, and I do think that there is a good chance he would go on day two of the draft if it happens now. At number seven, we have Shadur Sanders, obviously Deion Sanders' son. He is at Colorado, true junior, six foot two, 215 pounds. The thing with Shadur Sanders is really interesting. I don't think he's the most kind of athletically gifted quarterback. He can run and escape and make some plays. I definitely think that that's there. I do think that he has a good enough NFL arm, but I don't think it's particularly impressive. He might have the weakest arm of anybody in the top 10 quarterbacks here. There's nothing wrong with it. He can get the ball there on time, on target, but I don't think it's some superstar elite level arm where it really allows him to get out of tight situations and rocket the ball in there. I do think he has to rely more on timing and accuracy and anticipation and understanding how to attack defenses. I do think he has really solid accuracy and a good understanding of where he should go with the football and know how to attack the defenses that he is playing. I think his decision-making, his off-script, his anticipation, his ability to go through progressions are all developing nicely. Obviously, his first year in the FBS, 
and I definitely think that he has shown some great traits and some great things that you really look at and think you can develop into an NFL quarterback. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I don't think he's going to come out this year. I do think he's going to go back to Colorado with his dad, see if they can build up the program really effectively there. But I do think he's shown some nice traits. And once again, if he were to come out now, I think he could go day two of the NFL draft. Right now, I have a second round grade on him, a true second round grade. So I definitely think that NFL teams could value a lot of the traits that he brings to the table. Might not be the highest upside quarterback in my mind, but I think that he could be a really good starter for a long time. At number six, perhaps my first big surprise, I have J.J. McCarthy. I think for a lot of people, McCarthy is going to end up at quarterback three. And right now, that is kind of where I think the league is headed with McCarthy having a lot of the physical traits and a lot of the impressive stats and things that you know might make him be a top 10 pick in the draft. And I like McCarthy. I just don't think that he's quite in that conversation for me. I have a true second round grade on him. I definitely think that the arm talent's there when you see him just absolutely rip the ball he can throw it with velocity and really fit it into some tight windows. There's some really impressive deep throws that he can make, especially off play action where he can set his feet and just let that ball fly. I definitely like a lot of the things that McCarthy can do. He's got pretty decent accuracy. It's nothing super refined or super impressive at this point. He can go through some progressions. I think it's mostly you know things that are half field reads or predetermined kind of throws quickly to get the ball out of his hand and get it into his playmaker's hands. But I definitely I definitely think that he has shown some really nice things. He can throw on the run. He has some nice mobility. He can be a threat in the read option game as well. And he's got some good speed there. He's a pretty good decision maker. He takes care of the ball really well besides that Bowling Green game where he threw three interceptions. He hasn't had another game where he threw an interception. So I think he does take care of the ball pretty well as well. It's just the question marks kind of surrounding him being the true catalyst behind that Michigan offense and continuing to be able to anticipate routes that give me a little bit of pause with JJ McCarthy. They just don't ask him to do too much. Most of it is pretty simple. You know, either screens out quickly, predetermined quick reads, a slant, a hitch, something like that, or a play action boot where he has a guy on a deep crosser wide open. He's shown the ability to make throws deep downfield or, you know, kind of be the creator in the offense, but Michigan just doesn't ask him to do it very often. I mean, that means that he can take care of the ball. He has a 76.2 completion percentage. He only has three interceptions all coming in the same game. He's an incredibly efficient quarterback. I just think that there are some question marks as far as when he really gets into a true drop back passing game. Can he be the true catalyst? Can he read a full NFL defense and be able to pick apart where to go with the football based on the coverages he's seeing? I definitely think that that talent is in there, but we just haven't seen it a lot. So McCarthy, I am a little bit more wait and see on. He is number six for me. At number five, we have Bo Nix. Bo Nix is somebody that many college football fans remember back from his time at Auburn where he was kind of completely a bust. He just was not a good player for him. Ends up transferring to Oregon and becomes a really good quarterback. It's kind of interesting to see. He's a senior at this point, six foot two, 213 pounds, and he's really kind of developed into a nice quarterback prospect. He has a 77.7 completion percentage, really shows that he knows where to go with the football. He's able to make good decisions, make good reads. He has 29 touchdowns to just two interceptions so far this season as well. Very impressive numbers. Some of the best traits, I think, when it comes to Knicks are his accuracy. He is deadly accurate. He can put the ball exactly where he wants to put it. He can throw an absolute dime deep downfield, kind of all layers of the field. He has that ability to really just kind of put it exactly where he wants. He can also anticipate where he needs to go with the ball, throw it before the wide receivers come open, and he is a very, very good decision maker. He's kind of got middling arm talent. He's not the most impressive when it comes to his mobility or his pocket management, his off script ability. Those are all perfectly adequate. I do think that he can move a little bit. It's just not going to be something that's a true weapon in the NFL. It's more something like he can escape and pick up seven yards in a first down, which is incredibly important. That's really what matters for pocket passers, and he has that. But I just think that there is potentially a ceiling on what he can be in the NFL. I think it is probably a you know middle tier, good starter type of quarterback that you'd be getting with Bo Nix. But I really like what he has. It's a late first, early second round grade for me. I think the accuracy, the timing, the ability to read defenses, throw with the anticipation, and take care of the football. Those are all very valuable traits. And I think you could get a very solid starting quarterback out of Bo Nix if you drafted him somewhere in the first or second round. At number four, we have Michael Penix Jr. Michael Penix has just been a 
absolute beast for Washington over the past two seasons. The big thing with Michael Penix is his injury history. Had four season-ending injuries at his time at Indiana. He's now a sixth-year senior at Washington, so he's a little bit on the older side as well. But, you know, he has got some really, really awesome traits. He's got really deadly accuracy. I think that he can put the ball exactly where he wants to. He's got impressive arm talent. The ball flies off his hand with impressive velocity, and he can absolutely put it in a bucket deep downfield. There's no problem with that as well. He can go through an NFL defense. He can read the defense with progressions, understand where to go with the football, anticipate, make good decisions. Those are all really, really strong points of him. I do think he does have some limitations when it comes to his ability, his ability to step up in the pocket, make a play when things break down, be able to escape the rush and make a play. I do think that he is a little bit of a statue in the pocket at times. He reminds me of somebody like Kirk Cousins, who isn't necessarily the most mobile, but he has kind of everything else that you would really look for he's got a good arm he's got good accuracy he can read NFL defenses really effectively and I think that Michael Penix could absolutely turn into a really high quality NFL starter for a team that needs one I do think there are some limitations in his ability to kind of reach that high high ceiling at the quarterback position just because he doesn't have that ability to be a true creator out of structure but I think that what he brings to the table is very impressive. I do have a late first, early second round grade on him as well. I'll be curious to see where the league values him just because of some of his injury history and potentially some of his limitations and being a mobile weapon. But I do think Penix has really, really good traits that you would want in an NFL starter. Now getting into my top three, these are all guys that I think could be absolute superstars at the next level. And number three, I have Jaden Daniels, the quarterback from LSU. Daniels has come a long way since he was a starter as a freshman at Arizona State, where basically he was just a true athlete at the position. He really wasn't an effective passer. He wasn't able to do much through the air. He was pretty much just an extra runner out there. And he was very good at that because he's a great athlete. But he has come so far ever since, especially he's transferred to LSU these past two years. He has really become a awesome passer of the football as well. He throws with really good accuracy. He's got plenty of arm talent, has one of the best deep balls that I've seen in a while, just his ability to drop it in the bucket, knowing very good decisions. Last year, he took care of the ball extremely effectively, but didn't push it too far down the field. This year, he's pushing it down the field, but still taking care of the football. And I think he is very much in the Heisman conversation for LSU you right now you really don't have a ton of question marks maybe the ability to anticipate and go through progressions is something that he is still continuing to develop but I think that he has shown the ability to make full field reads to be able to kind of understand and diagnose what a defense is trying to do and how to stop it he also does have elite rushing ability he's somebody that can make guys miss in the open field he can be a true weapon in the running game both when things break down or in the designed quarterback run game as well he can step up in the pocket evade the rush make a play keep his eyes downfield throw with great mobility timing effort he just has really everything that i look for on a quarterback prospect right now a lot of people really didn't think of him much more than kind of a late round you know, flyer at quarterback, bet on the traits, but he has truly developed into a very legitimate quarterback prospect in this NFL draft. I do think that the NFL is going to catch up to this as well. I don't think I'm going to be the only one with Jane Daniels up at number three in this quarterback class once it gets closer to the draft. Six foot four, 210 pounds. He's got everything that you look for in a quarterback, and I definitely think that you could take him with a first round pick and be very excited with what Jane Daniels could provide. At number two, I have Caleb Williams out of USC, obviously one of the most hyped up quarterback prospects that we have seen in a very long time. And I don't have him at number one. And it's part of just the talent of the other great quarterback in this class. But I also do think there are some legitimate concerns that have popped up with Caleb Williams over the year as well. He has amazing accuracy, amazing arm talent, and just ridiculous ability to create out of structure keep his eyes downfield and make plays that's where the Patrick Mahomes comparisons come from and I absolutely see why that happens because man he really can just put it in to an absolute bucket deep down the field. He can keep his eyes downfield, make six guys miss as he sprints around the pocket and just heaves it deep for a touchdown. He can run and make plays with his legs as well. There, from a physical perspective, is not much more that you could want from your quarterback. He is a little bit smaller. He's six foot one, but he is well built at 216 pounds. So I don't think that's going to be a determining factor for many NFL teams as well. 
I just think that there are some things that have popped up this year. He has turned the ball over a little bit more. Fumbles are a very legitimate issue for Caleb Williams, and I think that comes with some of his ability to kind of manage the pocket. He does a great job avoiding the rush and being able to make guys miss, but I also think that he oftentimes does too much, where he's he just needs to play in rhythm, throw it to the open guy, hit your check down, and move on to play another down. He holds the ball for longer than three seconds. There's really no NFL quarterbacks that do that ever. And he just does that on a very consistent basis. His average time to throw is well over three. I do think that his ability to really play within structure and understand this is where I need to attack and I don't need to extend the play for seven seconds and keep my eyes downfield and try to make a big play. I think that's where he's gotten himself into some trouble this year. He just needs to learn to dial it back, understand where and how to attack defenses and when to go off script. That's what makes Patrick Mahomes so good. He will absolutely dice you up in structure if you let him. But when things break down, when things don't work, that's when he can extend and make plays. I think Caleb Williams needs to find that balance a little bit more because I do think there are just some Zach Wilson tendencies in looking at the amazing off script plays and then just kind of understanding that Zach Wilson was really bad in structure. He held onto the ball forever in college and it didn't translate well to the NFL. I'm not saying that Caleb Williams is anywhere near that, but I do think that there are just some similarities when it comes up to those things popping up in his game. And that leads me to my number one quarterback. That is Drake May, the quarterback out of UNC. This guy has it all. He's six foot four, 230 pounds. He's really, really accurate. And I'm very impressed by what he does in structure. That's kind of the determining factor with him over Caleb Williams, because I think he is really good in structure. He's got an electric arm, a really, really powerful arm that allows him to do everything that you could ask for. He does have really impressive ability to throw with leverage, throw with understanding of how to attack defenses. He can manage the pocket. He steps up in the pocket, makes plays, but I think he does it a bit more efficiently in his processor than Caleb Williams does. I also think that his off-script ability, it's not the same as Caleb Williams because Williams is probably the best off-script quarterback I've ever watched, but Drake May really isn't far behind because he has shown some great ability to get out of structure, throw it with his left hand, make crazy plays, and you know he's showing a lot of the ridiculous out-of-structure stuff that you look for as well in a quarterback. I just think he does it better in structure as well. The ability to anticipate, make good decisions, not hold on to the ball forever, and just continue to carve up defenses in structure when he can, and then let things go and just kind of go out there and make plays when the, uh, the play breaks down. That's what I love about Drake May. And I do think that there is something to be said as well. Drake May's supporting cast really isn't that impressive. USC has some really good wide receivers. The offensive line has held up pretty well as well. So I think that there is some talent on that USC offense. For UNC, there's just not a lot. And I think that Drake May has shown that he can fight through adversity. They've had a couple of really tough comeback wins. They've lost to some, you know, maybe not quite as good teams, but I don't think it's as much on Drake May as it is some of the supporting cast around him. May is doing what he can to will his team to victory. I think that that shows that you can put him in a spot where maybe he's not on the best NFL roster and he can still have a lot of success. What do you think of my top 10 quarterback rankings? Who would you have at number one? Give me your top 10 list in the comments down below. If you'd like this kind of content, please hit that like button down below. While you're down there, subscribe as well for more NFL and NFL draft content just like this. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.